What we're going to be going over here is covariance and we're going to be looking at its linear relationship between some variables here and really how we use this covariance here to determine a regression line. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about here, we're going to actually go through an example here where we're going to be using our the covariance here of some variables here to determine a regression line. So what we're talking about here, we're going to have plotted, I got a, about a dozen different points here, x and y points based on our xy coordinate graph here. So along our x-axis, this is going to be our independent variable and we'll just refer to it as x here. And then along our y-axis, this is the dependent variable. This uh, y variable here depends on x. So we've got our uh, y-axis here defined as our y variable here. So we got these points here, and we want to determine a regression line or a line that best fits these different points. And these different points I show as little squares here. So really what you're typically doing in regression analysis here, you really want to minimize the x-y distance here between these different points here. You want to uh, just run up a line up through those points here to minimize the distance between their x and y coordinates and really that's what you're doing here in regression analysis. But we're going to look at it in terms of covariance. Say for example the only thing we have say in our software package would be the function of determining the covariance here. So we can use this covariance to determine our regression line here. Okay, so what you're going to have to do with the covariance here, the first thing you have to do is you have to determine your uh, average x values here that you have, uh, whatever the average x value would be. So we've got these different x1, x, x1, y1 coordinates, x2, y2, x3, y3, and so up through x n, y, n, and we got 12 of them in this case. So what you would do is you just average up all your x values here and divide them by the number of uh, points you have, and that's going to give you your average, our mean average here for your x value. And in this case, we're looking at our mean average for those points here was 71.833 here. Okay, so that's the first thing you have to do here. Next thing you have to do is determine your y average for your y variables here. So in this case, we have, uh, again, you'd go y1 plus y2 plus y3 here, divide it by the number of uh, variables you have, and you're going to come up with your average y mean uh, average here at 1,041. 0.75 here. So these are the two. These are the key points, uh, key lines that you have to work with f uh, when you're working with covariance. You have to determine those average values for both your dependent variable, in this case y, and your independent variable, in this case x. Here. Okay. Now what we have to do is uh, this is the key here. When you're working with uh, any of these averages here, your average y. Uh, mean average of your y value and your mean average of your x value are going to intersect at some point here. And the key is the regression line has to pass through that point. It has to have uh, the lot, our regression line has to intersect at our average y mean and our average x mean here. And then the only thing we have to know beyond that is we have to determine the slope of that line here. How in this case we got an upward sloping line, and that's really the change of y, whatever our change in y is over the change of x. So as long as we can determine that slope, and we know our averages for x and y coordinates here, we know we can define that line here because we'll be able to determine that line based on its slope and the fact that it intersects at the uh, intersects with the x and y mean values here. Okay, so when we're talking about covariance here, just to understand it, uh, what you're doing is you're really looking at the change, for each of those points, you're going to look at your change in y from the mean here, the y mean, in this case, the y mean to its y value here for the first point, whatever that uh, distance would be here. And then you're looking at the change in x, and I'll, just this first little point here is all I'm looking at, the change in x, the change in x from its value here at the first point. And then you take that that distance, the y distance or the change in y from its mean value and the change of x from its mean value here. You multiply them together and that's going to give you the covariance here. And that's really uh, how much x and y vary together. So what you're going to do for all these points here, you're going to have a summation from 1 to n points. You're going to look at the change of x times the change of y. And that's from 
their mean values here. So that's just a basic understanding of uh, what a covariance is here. Okay, so knowing what we know here, we know uh, we're going to go through and we'll calculate the covariance here. We're going to have to know the average y's and the average x values. And then knowing that, we'll be able to determine our regression line. So just remember the regression line is y equals m, the slope, uh, times x, whatever our, our x value would be here, y is this value over here, plus b. b is the y-intercept. So that's the other thing we're going to have to determine here. We're going to be able to determine. b is where, where our x is equal to 0. Our b value is our y value is going to have some value here. So when x is equal to 0 here, we have to determine the y-intercept here, where what the value of y is. So we can do that knowing our covariance here. Okay, so let's go and first off, let's just look at the quantities or what we're looking at. That are my x values I'm showing over here, and then my y values I'm showing over here. Okay, so what I've done here, just sticking it in, and we'll look at it in terms of Excel as well here, but just putting into a function here for, in this case, I was using MapleSoft as some uh, function to determine our, my covariance here and both my variance. So what we're going to have to, uh, based on those numbers I have here, I come up with a covariance equal to 2793.4, and then the variance I have at 270.87. Okay. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at calculating our slope. Okay, here's m. That's going to be our line slope. Now remember, that's the change of y over the change of x on our graph here. All right, so this is what it is. The slope or the m value here, that covariance, is really the covariance of x and y here. So how much does x and y vary together here? And that, our covariance I had calculated at 2,793 here for those points. And then divide it by the variance in x. And really that's the spread in our egg different x points here. So that are equals 271 here, rounded it off. Now, this variance in x, that could also be just the covariance but in x itself, the covariance of x of x here. So... Uh, you wouldn't even have to calculate the variance here. But they're the same thing. They just mean the same thing here. So you're going to come up with uh, a variance or a covariance of x in itself here of 271. So that division is going to give you 10.31. So what we're saying here, that's the slope of the line. So the key is here, y goes up 10.31 uh, units here for every one unit in x. So that's the slope of our line here. Again, we're looking at it in terms of... Uh, these covariance and variances, we'll look at it in terms of Excel here, and you'd use some other software, whatever the function is for your other software, but you're going to look for some functions that would be called covariance or variance here, and you'd be using those to solve for those uh, solve for those quantities here. So here's our line equation. Now we're going to just solve for B. So for our line equation, Y equals a slope M here times whatever quantity we have for X plus the b or the y-intercept here. So just plugging in your mean values here, the mean value of x was 71.833. Mean value here for your y's was 1,041.7. So here, put that in, 1,041.7. Your y mean value here equals, and we solve for m here, our slope at 10.31 that we had up over here. Take that times the x mean value here, 71.8, and then you'd add to that the b or the y-intercept here. So uh, uh, multiplying these out, moving it to the other side of the equation, we're going to have 1,041 less 741. That's going to equal our b value here. So that difference gives us our b value or our y-intercept here at 300. Okay, so now we have the equation for our line based on that covariance that we have here. So y equals the slope, 10.31 times whatever x value we have in here, plus the b or the y-intercept here of 300. So uh, just using, you know, just a cross check here, using our Maple, I use MapleSoft, and we'll also look at it in terms of Excel here, but just uh, using a MapleSoft linear fit routine, I came up with, again, 
this is the same line here. Why I had 300.98 here for the B intercept, just rounded it off here, plus, and then you're going to get some long number here for your slope. It was 10.323, on and on here. So that was the slope here. Just uh, using some software, uh, linear, or some software regression fitting, you're going to come up with the uh, value of your line, or the uh, equation for the line here, just to cross check it. All we did here is used uh, just using this covariance itself here, we can determine the line that fits that, uh, that regression line that fits our data, knowing our, we had to determine our average x values here and our average y values here. And then plugging those into our equation, we solve for m, we were able to solve for the y intercept here. Okay. So that's uh, basically what you would be doing here when you're fitting a linear regression line, just using your covariance here and knowing your x, average x's and average y's. Okay, so let's go over here and let's just go and look at, say for just to understand what's going on here as far as if you're not familiar with your Excel spreadsheet here, I'm showing an Excel here, you would have to bring up some data. It would be under your data analysis here. So you have to load that into your Excel uh, program here. It's an, it's an add-in or an add-on here. So if you don't have that, you have to go through the procedure to add it into your Excel spreadsheet here. So under your data analysis, there's a whole bunch of different selections, but you would select regression in this case because we're going to be fitting that regression line and then you're going to have you select make that selection and then you're going to have a other bunch of selections that you're going to have to uh, fill in and make some selection for fills and ranges and so forth after you make those selections and you enter your data just hit your button and you're going to come up with uh, on one of your sheets you're going to give be given these regression statistics and there's a whole bunch of statistics that Excel does here your your R squareds and just your standard error here of your uh, regression here and then you're going to have some other results over all kinds of other results here just to point it out but for our example we had to determine that our, our slope of our line or our line equation here so in this case you go down to this coefficient here and uh, factor here in your on those on that output here so you're going to have the intercept and I'm it's just showing here is I'm showing it as that was that y intercept here Excel figured it out to be 300.97 here and then that x variable that was the coefficient here for the m our slope we had that Excel said 10.31 both of which we calculated here using some other software and we we did it with in terms of our covariance as well here okay so the other thing with excel let's just go over here here's uh, just excel here these those functions that we talked about here for that covariance just put in equals and then cov a r i a n c e here and you can dot either you had a selection for based on the population or the sample size here so you put that in and then you got to put in your ranges. In this case, I had those values here for or my X values I had in my A uh, cell here or my A cells here. So, and then for the B value or for the Y intercept I had over here. So for our covariance, I just put uh, my Y intercept here from B1 to B12 here, little comma here, semi or colon here. And then for the A value here, the X value, I just put in A1 through A12 here. Hit the, uh, hit the enter key and you're gonna come up with your covariance here. And that would come up at 2793 something. And then you could use uh, the variance here. Remember we, we have to calculate for the denominator of our deal. So it'd just be equal VAR put P or in this case of sample size S and just put based on that X. Our variance was based on X. So for A1 here through A12. Or you could just use the covariance itself looking at X against itself. So A1 here, semi or colon A12, what I'm showing here, and then A1 to A12. Hit it and you're going to come up with uh, the covariance here or the variance you're going to come up with that value of 271. Okay, so that's just using Excel. If you're not familiar with Excel, Excel has all kinds of statistical functions on it. We were just looking at the covariance here and the variance and back to it again here uh, using this regression here. Out of the data analysis package or to add in here, we use, I made the selection for regression.
and that's going to give you a whole bunch of different terms here. So if you're not familiar with it and you have it available here, we use it. Okay, and then one last thing here, moving up here. Remember, we were talking about that covariance here. And just understand, oh, that was the, just understand, we can expand that equation. That was that difference between our x values here and the x mean or the expected x mean here. And that difference times the y values, whatever y value it has, and their expected mean here. Everything on this covariance or this equation here when we're talking about, it was based on uh, some expected values here, not to confuse it or anything. But what we would have done here, normally what you would do here for a regression line, you would have went through some a bunch of different functions here just to understand what those different functions are here. If you would just do it by hand or come in and you'd have to do it with some, so, uh, this is the way some software package would be doing it here. So for your, this is just for this M, our slope here of our line. What you're gonna do, this covariance here, just understand it here. And this is what, uh, this covariance here becomes the numerator of this generalized equation here. This equation we're looking at here, that is what uh, the computer would be doing here for solving for M just under its regular regression uh, analysis uh, equation that you'd be doing here. So the covariance is really taking your mean of the x's, that is from x, x, sum up all your x points, divide them by whatever number of points you have here, time the mean of the y's here, do the same thing. You just sum up all your y points here, divide them by the number of points you have here. So you're gonna take the mean of the x's here times the mean of the y's here. And then you would, from that, you would be subtracting the mean of the x, y's here. So you're just taking your x times your y here from 1 to n here, divided by the number of points here. So that's really what the covariance, the covariance is related to this generalized formula here We for determining the slope of the line here. And we could be looking at it down here. The mean of the x and y's here, less the mean of the x's, and the mean of the y's, if you're just looking at it in terms, those terms here. And then that's for the our numerator, and that's the covariance. And then for our denominator here, that's really taking uh, the mean of the x squareds here. So what you're going to look at is your uh, take all the one to n here of your x's here, divided by their number, but you do by the number of points here, but you'd square that quantity here, and then you'd be subtracting from it the mean of the squared x's here. So you're going to from one to n here, you're going to each of those points here, x1 you're going to square, x2 you're going to square, x3 you're going to square, and you're going to be adding those up and just divide them by n here. And that's really the variance here. The mean of the x's less the mean of the x's times the mean of the x's, just to make that understanding. So if you see this type of function here in a textbook or something, this is the generalized equation here to do determine the slope of the line here, and that's really what your software package is doing. But you can break it down here. This equation uh, had, the software package is doing these, it has this in their numerator and this in denominator. But you can look at it in terms of the covariance here of x with y as the uh, function here in your numerator, and that's what it's doing here. And then for your denominator, it's just the variance of x here. So the mean of the x squareds times the mean of the squared x is here, or the covariance in itself of x times x here. Okay, so we ran over a number of a lot of material here, and we looked at that regression line here in terms of uh, covariances here, and how we could solve for the regression line here in those different data points uh, just by looking at the covariance here. All right, so that'll summarize our discussion.